And every one of us knows Ayatul Kursi. Every one of us, uh, insha'Allah ta'ala, has memorized Ayatul Kursi. And if anybody has not memorized it, then they definitely should memorize Ayatul Kursi. Why is Ayatul Kursi so important? What is so blessed about Ayatul Kursi? There are so many ahadith that tell us the blessings of Ayatul Kursi. Of them is the hadith of Ubayy ibn Ka'ab uh, in Sahih Bukhari, that once the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam went to him, and Ubay was, as we already mentioned yesterday, uh, one of the most knowledgeable companions about the Quran. So the Prophet asked Ubay, O oh Ubay, which ayah in the Quran is the most blessed ayah? It is the greatest ayah. A'zamu ayah fi kitabillah. So Ubay did not want to respond out of modesty. So he said, Allah and His Messenger know best. Allah and His Messenger know best. So the Prophet insisted, O oh Ubay, what is the greatest ayah in the Quran? So when Ubay realized the Prophet wants a response, so he said, Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyu al-qayyum, la ta'khuduhu sinatu wa la nawm, lahu ma fi al-samawati wa ma fi al-ard, man dha al-ladhi yashfau indahu la bi-idhnih, li'alamu ma bayna idihim wa ma khalfahum, wa la yuhituna bi shayim al-ilm illa bima sha'a, wasi'a kursiyuhu al-samawati wal-ard, wa la ya'udu hifduhuma, wa huwa al-aliyu al-azim. When Ubay said this, the Prophet sallam, he like we pushed him gently, yani as a manly a sign of manliness, like it's what we would do to another man, just push him out of pride, out of happiness. And he said, لِيَهْنِكَ الْعِلْمُ يَا أَبَ الْمُنْذِرِ That knowledge shall always be, this is difficult to translate, but it's basically, knowledge will always be happy around you. Or may you always be given glad news of knowledge. Or you and knowledge are always going to be happy together. Some type of phrase like this, right? So you and knowledge go hand in hand and may you be congratulated for your knowledge. This is one of the ways to put it together. So this shows us that the Prophet ﷺ agreed with Ubay ibn Ka'b that indeed the greatest ayah in the entire Quran is Ayatul Kursi. A'zamu ayatin fi kitab Allah Azza wa Jal. In another hadith, uh, the Prophet ﷺ told Abu Hurairah that uh, he had gotten a lot of charity. This hadith happened in Ramadan. Uh, so the Prophet ﷺ accepted a lot of sadaqah. So he said to Ubay, Oh Ubay, go guard the sadaqah in case somebody steals it all night. Uh, Abu Huraira, excuse me. So Abu Huraira went and he guarded the sadaqah. And he fell asleep. When he woke up, uh, he saw somebody stealing some food, something. So he caught him. And the man began to cry, beg, plead. I have a family. I have to eat food to eat. I'm hungry. I'm starved. Please. Just, just forgive me once, I'll never come back again. So Abu Huraira had pity on him. He was very wily, sneaky, crafty. Abu Huraira felt pity, he let him go. So the next morning, the Prophet ﷺ asked him, what happened with your visitor? He already knew. What happened with your visitor? So Abu Huraira said, O Messenger of Allah, he was a poor man. He's, 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 he, he begged, he pleaded, I let him go. The Prophet ﷺ said, he's going to come back again. So Abu Huraira felt, how did the Prophet know? I have to make sure that this time I catch him and I bring him to the Prophet So this time he was on his guard. Lo and behold, he fell asleep, woke up, the man was right in the middle, getting what he could, grabbing what he could. This time Abu Huraira jumped on him. He goes, Wallahi, I'm going to take you to the Prophet And the man began to beg and plead and cry and this and that, so long and so persistent that Abu Huraira once again felt sympathy for him. And he once again let him go. In the next morning, the Prophet again said, How was your visitor of last night, O Abu Huraira? So this time Abu Huraira said, Khalas, that's it. Three strikes and you're out, right? So on the third night, he stood up and he didn't fall asleep. He managed to catch him. Now, after begging and pleading did not work, the visitor said, Okay, will you let me go if I tell you something that will benefit you for the rest of your life? He said, What is it? Well, let me hear what this is. So he said, When you go to sleep, recite Ayatul Kursi. Because as long as you recite Ayatul Kursi at night, Allah Azza wa Jal will send a hafiz, a protector, to guard over you for the whole night. Nothing can harm you. So when Abu Huraira heard this, he felt this is a big prize, a big treasure. So he let him go. The next morning, the Prophet said, What happened with your visitor, Abu Huraira? And Abu Huraira told him the whole story. And the Prophet said, Oh Abu Huraira, Sadaqaka wa huwa kathub. He told you a truth now, but he is a habitual liar. This guy is a filthy liar, but this time he told you the truth. Sadaqaka wa huwa kathub. He's a kathub, not just kathib, kathub. He always lies, but this time he told you the truth. Do you know who your visitor was? Abu Huraira said, No. 
He said, that was shaitan. Your visitor was shaitan. That he wanted to steal from the sadaqah and he begged and pleaded his lies, you believed him. But the third time he told you the truth. What was the truth? If you recite ayat al-kursi, then nothing will harm you. No jinn, no waswas, no evil, nothing will harm you for the entire night. Allah will send an angel down to protect you. So we learn from this hadith that before we go to sleep, we need to recite Ayatul Kursi every single night. Our Prophet ﷺ, before going to bed, he would recite Ayatul Kursi on himself. Right? So Ayatul Kursi is the greatest ayah in the book of Allah. Ayatul Kursi is to be recited every night. In one hadith, we learn also the Prophet ﷺ said, Sunan al Nisa, he said that uh, Ayatul Kursi should be recited in the morning and the evening. We call them the adhkar of the sabah and masa. There were certain adhkar the Prophet would do in the morning anytime. Basically from Fajr to Dhuhr. And then there were other adhkar he would do in the evening. Basically from Asr to Maghrib anytime. He would just do these adhkar. So Ayatul Kursi was of those that he would recite it twice in the morning and evening. And in one other hadith reported in Muslim Imam Ahmad that it is also authentic. Our Prophet ﷺ said that Man qara'a ayatul kursi dubura kulli salatin That whoever recited ayatul kursi after every single salah لم يمنعه من دخول الجنة إلا الموت The only thing preventing him from entering Jannah is his own death. This is one of the most beautiful ahadith that I want you all to memorize and then act upon. Beginning from today. What did the Prophet ﷺ say? Whoever recites Ayatul Kursi after every single Fard Salah. So before you stand up and you finish your Fard Salah, before you go to your worldly affairs, go back home, go to your work, you stay seated. You do the Adhkar. Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha Allah. You do all of that. When you finish all of that, then you recite Ayatul Kursi. And if you make this a habit and a routine, what did our Prophet ﷺ say? Nothing will prevent a person from entering Jannah except his own death. Meaning, you are a person of Jannah if you recite Ayatul Kursi after every of the five salawat. Which of course means you better be praying five times a day. That's understood in the hadith, right? You must be praying five times a day and then you recite Ayatul Kursi after every single salah. Now, why? What is so special about this Ayatul Kursi? It is but one ayah. It is one third of a page. And there are so many other verses of the Quran. The Quran has over 6,000 something verses. Why does this verse stand out so much? The response is very simple. It is because the verse deals with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His names and attributes. And always the most majestic verses and the most blessed verses in the Quran are the verses that talk about Allah Azza wa Jal. Why? Because nothing is more grandiose to discuss, more majestic to discuss, more beautiful to discuss than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no topic that is more worthy of being talked about and praised other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so the best verses in the Quran are those verses that praise Allah. And the best surah in the Quran is the surah that is nothing but a praise and description of Allah. And that is Surah Al-Ikhlas. The Prophet said, who amongst you would want to read one third of the Quran every night. The Sahaba said, who can manage this, O Messenger Allah? Who can read 10 Jews a night? So he said, I will tell you a surah. If you read it, you will get one third of the Quran. That is Surah Al-Ikhlas. Why is Surah Al-Ikhlas? Why is Ayatul Kursi so blessed and holy? Because the content of these ayat and, uh, uh, and surahs is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the names and attributes of Allah Jalla Jalaluhu. This one verse has more than 20 of Allah's names and attributes. And in fact, the whole verse from beginning to end is nothing other than the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is because of this that this verse is the greatest verse in the Quran. I remind myself and all of you that we should be repeating and memorizing this verse and repeating it day and night, morning and evening, and after the end of every single salah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make us of those who enter Jannah بغير حساب ولا عذاب وأخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين.